the way that I got involved in propulsion with jellyfish had to do with, in the beginning, their ecology because they swim in order to feed. In order to understand their feeding, then we had to understand their propulsion. And what happened was that that opened up a whole new area about how animals move for us. The reason was that we, working with engineering colleagues, we found that uh, simply, bend, simply contracting a structure like a bell is not sufficient to move the animal through the water. We found that the bell had to be flexible at the margin, and the same amount of energy with a rigid structure did not yield propulsion. Unless you put a flexible structure around the end, in this case, it's what we call uh, a passive structure. It's not actively energ energized. It, it's really just a flexible structure and it creates a hydrodynamic environment that allows propulsion to occur. So this was the first time we realized that. And there was information, and there is information in the literature. Other people have looked at propulsion and flexibility, but what this did was cue us into its central role in effective propulsion for animals. One, one of the reasons that we're so interested in this issue of flexibility is that animal propulsion is generally orders of magnitude more efficient than most types of uh, human-generated propulsion. And so we became interested in or really asking the question, what is it about animal propulsion that makes it so successful? And could it have something to do with flexibility and bending? And uh, that has been a question that we've been pursuing since then because once we looked at bending patterns, what we found were, first of all, all animals bend. And second, that bending patterns are, are not random, but they're organized in what we see are pretty persistent patterns throughout the animal kingdom for animals moving in fluids. And that doesn't just mean liquids, it means animals also moving in air, flight, as well as swimming. And so we've been pursuing that. We think that these central issues of propulsion have applications for vehicle design. There's a, uh, I'm interested in them as a biologist to understand how animals work. But our engineering colleagues are interested in them to convert them into uses for a variety of purposes. Some of them may be um, for applications in remotely operated vehicles, but we can see those serving purposes in civilian life, military life, and a number of purposes. Any place where you need efficient uh, propulsion and control like animals have. Uh, we envision a world with devices that operate as efficiently as animals. That's what we see as, as a future, and that's what we're working towards. When I was a child, I didn't relish the idea of swimming with jellyfish. Uh, it could be a painful experience, and, um, and I really didn't like the idea of being stung all over my face. And so, uh, I didn't like jellyfish in the water, but the more time that you spend in the water with these organisms, the more I learn just about uh, how animals move, what, what it's like to be in their world, and their world is really exciting and it's really interesting as a, as a scientist. So I try and spend as much time as I can doing that. Now.